Hi everyone, welcome to our course. This is our first module for first unit. So in this course, the course is called LLM Zoom Camp. In this course, we will learn about practical applications of LLM and in particular, we will focus our attention on RAC retrieval of the new generation. I'll shortly talk about these abbreviations, what they mean um, and what we exactly will do. And I want to start first with explaining the problem we are going to use uh, to solve throughout the course. Um, so this will be our running problem. And in our community, in Data Talks Club, we have multiple courses. Uh, so this LLM Zoom Camp is our fifth course. And usually in our courses, we have frequently asked questions. So there are questions that, uh, no, I don't know, answers in the videos or answers are not uh, easy to find and we have these documents I'll quickly open one of them and in these documents we have frequently asked questions so the format is there is a section then there's a question then there is an answer so this is like that question answer question answer and we have quite a few of them so in this particular document for the data engineering zoom camp we have 321 page of such answers and typically we ask the students to uh, use this document so before they uh, go to slack to the channel to the group uh, to the course channel uh, we ask them to check this document first before they ask a question. And of course, uh, most of the questions they have, the students have, they will find here. But the problem is that it's not super easy to find. Um, right? So there are 321 questions. Like how do you actually find the information you need here? So this is not trivial. That's why we will use the data from uh, these FAQs, from the three FAQs, from the three courses, and we will build a bot, we will build a bot, a Q&A system that given a question from a potential student, will use the documents, the FAQ documents, uh, these particular documents to answer questions from the students. So this is what we are going to build at the end. It will be a simple form. This is how I see right now. We have not built it yet. It will be a simple form where you put an answer, a question, and get back the answer. Okay. So how we are going to do this? We are going to use LLMs and tracks. So what they are. And this is exactly what we are going to talk about in this module. So now we'll talk about LLMs, we'll talk about track, what the rack is, and what exactly we are going to cover, um, well, what exactly you will learn in the course um, and what you will build. So let's start. So um, we will start with what LLMs are. So LLMs or LLM, it, st it stands for um, Large Language Model. Large Language Model. Uh, and we can start with just language model. So language models are things that predict the next token, the next word based on the words you have typed so far uh, or you have so far in your document. So imagine your phone, right? So you open WhatsApp and you want to text somebody. Let's say you, you want to text your buddy, your friend. So you start typing how space i space and the phone your phone will typically suggest you as the next logical word because typically what you type is how are you so it recognizes how are so logically the next word will be you right or how are the maybe you want to ask how are the things right so it suggests you commonly common words that go after how are and um, so also on your phone, this is personalized to you. And your phones use language models for that. So it, typically it's something simple, like native base, uh, that just predicts the, sec the next word based on what you typed so far. 
So these are just simple, or we can call them small, language models. So they don't have a lot of parameters. Um, they are quite simple. They are also quite, um, how to say, stupid, let's say. Because stupid compared to large language models. So a lot of usual sim simple language models do their job fine. But large, large language models, uh, there's a reason they call it large, because they are huge. So they have a lot of parameters. They have billions and billions and billions of parameters. And then they are trained on tons and tons of data. And what they do is essentially the same. They predict the next word based on the words before. But the way they do it, it feels like you're talking to a human, at least if you use something like ChatGPT. Mm. Yeah, it feels like you're talking to an intelligent being because it understands what you ask and gives answers. Uh, but under the hood, this is a language model with tons and tons and tons of parameters and trained uh, trained on tons and tons and tons of data. Inside, uh, let me let me draw. A, oops, let me draw an LLM here. So it will be a box like that. LLM. So inside, they use uh, neural networks like transformers, but we actually will not go into that. So in this course, we will not cover the theory behind LLMs. We will not try to look inside the LLMs. And we are going to treat them as black boxes. So to our purposes, this is a super smart thing that can figure out what you ask and give meaningful answers. So this is how we are going to use it. And what is inside, it's for us in this particular course, is secondary. There are a lot of there are a lot of courses already, a lot of books that talk about um, you know, the internals of LLMs, but here we will not cover that. And typically, so LLM receives an input. So we will talk about the simple case when the input is text, and we usually call this input prompt. So this is what goes inside the LLM. And the output is some answer. So how a prompt may look like. Um, for example, this is what we're going to use in the course. Is a question like, um, so this is the course, uh, this, this is the prompt. It starts with a question. Um, how do I enroll in the course? And context based on what we should answer the question. And there will be some context and then answer. And after that, we may just leave it at that. So answer, colon, and that's it. And remember I talked about language models. So the, uh, what language models do is they complete the input and they find the next logical term or the next log not logical uh, word for that, right? So it sees that answer, Column. So expect, it expects, based on the context, it expects an answer to the question, or we expect it. So it will try to, to do that. So this is a, a prompt, uh, an example of a prompt. Uh, modern LLMs like ChatGPT, you don't actually need to do that. Like you don't need to write answer at the end. Uh, but this is just an example, right? And the answer could be the actual answer, right? Everything that goes after after this. So these are LLMs. And the next thing we will talk about uh, is RAC. So RAC stands for the retrieval augmented generation. And I think I made a typo here, augmented. So what it means is generation. There are two, two things that are interesting here. Generation and retrieval. So we use retrieval to augment generation. So retrieval is nothing else but search and generation is LLM. So LLMs generate text and they use search to augment the generation of this text. What exactly does it mean? So I have a few examples. 
why we need track, why do we need to augment our generation of the search. So let's see. Yeah, so this is the example. So I have asked a question uh, to ChatGPT, and the question is how do I cook salmon? And then this is a straightforward question. ChatGPT gives a very comprehensive answer, right? So, um, like, there is a lot of uh, ways to cook salmon, like five, quite a lot, right? So, this is a perfect example when we don't need search, right? We have a question, LLM knows the answer, and LLM gives us the answer. But what if we want to ask it about the course? So, we ask. Is it too late for me to join the course, right? But the LLM has no idea what we talk about. Like, which course? Is it too late? What, what does it mean exactly, right? And then it says, I can help you, but I need to know more details, right? So can you tell me more about that? And the reason we want to use search is actually to answer that, to give it more information, to give it more context, such that the LLM is able to give the answer, right? And this is another example, like how do I enroll in the course? Again, it has no clue what we ask about, but like it just gives some answer that is nonsense, right? Um, another good example where we use, uh, we use uh, retrieval, also in ChatGPT, is we can ask it, uh, look up in Bing how to enroll in data, Camp and tell me. So here we give it explicitly an instruction to uh, perform a search and then based on the results of the search give us the answer. So this is an example of RAC. So we augment the generation with the context we get from uh, search. And this is similar, more similar to what we are going to build. Um, this instruction is quite good. Okay, so let me go back here. So search is the first component of RAC. So we have like some sort of knowledge base. And then the other component is the actual LLM. And then uh, just remove that. Um, so we have two components, knowledge base and LLM. And let's say we have a user, where is the user, the student of the course, or I don't know, just a user. If if we talk about our example, it could be a student. If we talk about some other example, it could be just user. And the user has a question, like how do I enroll in the course? So this question, uh, let me call it Q. So in RAC, what we do first is we send this query or the question to the knowledge base. And the knowledge base has some article. So this is our FAQ is a knowledge base, right? So it has um, some articles, some answers, some questions and answers to these questions. So it could be like, how do I enroll in the course? There are some uh, entries that talk about that. So we retrieve these entries. And then later, so let's say, these are the documents, uh, I'll call them D1, uh, D2, etc., D5, right? So let's say we retrieve five documents. So these documents now have the context. So remember I showed you an example, how do I enroll in the course or how, like, is it too late to join the course? The LLM has no idea. But now these documents, they provide the context for LLM to figure out the right answer. So now using the documents, we do a prompt, we create a prompt. So let me just reuse uh, this prompt. So now we put this in a prompt and the context becomes uh, these documents, uh, D1, etc., D5, right? So these are the documents we received. And now we send this prompt to the LLM. So LLM receives the prompt, it has the question, it has the context, and now based on the question and the context, it can generate answer, 
which we now we will return to the user. So this is the answer we sent. So this is what I call the RAC framework, like how exactly we use a database, uh, it's knowledge base, but we can just call it database, and the LLM together in order to accomplish what we want here. How do we add context to our queries? Right? So this is the RAC framework. And actually, this database and this LLM can be anything. So for example, in the course in this particular module, we first will use a toy search engine. Like it will be a super simple search engine just to illustrate the idea. But then later in the same module, we will replace this search engine with Elasticsearch. And later in the course, we will replace, uh, we will not just use uh, text search, but we will use some other uh, ways of searching, in particular vector search. So this thing here, it can be anything, like it doesn't have to be one specific technology. In this framework, you can easily replace them with another tool and see what works better. And the same goes with LLM. So in this module, we will use OpenAI, but it doesn't have to be OpenAI. You can use some open source LLM and you just replace one with another. You will, of course, need to tweak the prompt because different LLMs expect, the, like they, they want the prompts to be a little bit different. And that's all. So we have the framework, we replace uh, or we put, we insert some particular database, some particular uh, LLM, we see how it works. And then at the end of the course, we will also put this in some nice UI like streaming or something like that. So this is what you're going to learn and this is what you're going to do. And then at the end of the course, you will implement something like that on your own knowledge base. So I'm really looking forward to the course and uh, yeah, have fun. And uh, yeah, next we'll talk about uh, preparing the environment. Talk to you soon.